the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. An open free marketplace for tokenization of internet bandwidth and disrupting all the ISPs and that's PKT which is a very new project and Charles you've done some research into it H you you're mining it and done plenty of research into it what's your overall thoughts of so far what you've seen into it uh, Charles and then H you jump in there right after him on that you know in my research it's obviously a very early stage project but mm -hmm. basically the ability to separate the you know uh, your internet connection into two different services one being the connection to you know the physical connection whether that's fiber optic satellite you know dsl telephone line to the actual service of providing the internet right to the servers that that that, that you know uh you, you get your d you get your ip address from your dns servers etc and so if you bifurcate those two things you could probably have a more competitive environment where you could drive costs down um, and, and it gets, you know, it gets really interesting, right? I and mean, it's obviously a very hard nut to crack because we yeah. kind of done a discussion of before of incumbent players. You have some very big incumbent players that probably don't want to see that happen. Oh, um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but it, it, it's really compelling in terms of a, uh, that, it, that you can do this from a technology perspective, right? And that, yeah. I think, once you can do something from a technology perspective, if it's that much better, it's just really a question of when and how long does it take, right? And right. it just comes, you know, who, who's going to make it, you know, is it going to be the first guy out of the gate that makes it happen? Is it the second, the third, the fourth? I mean, I can tell you when we went public and, you know, we started in 2013, we pivoted the model a couple of times. Most of the companies around 2014 in the crypto space, that this time everyone was Bitcoin oriented, are gone, right? Oh, yeah. There's only a handful that are around. Yeah. Um, and so we'll, 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 we'll see. I mean, I hope PKT, you know, makes it because it's a really exciting uh, project of what they're building. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I, I like that idea of bifurcating, you know, the service from the, 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 the kind yeah. of connection. Yeah, and Hal, I'll let you. I'll let you jump in. I probably went went a little bit long. Oh, no, no, you're good. Um, my my biggest thing was looking at this, looking at PKT, and thinking, wow, this little company has so much potential to put heat under the bottoms of big companies, and I like it because I mean, it's when you look at the pricing and everything, we know that it's not a super stable project right now, but the potential, I mean, just the idea of it. I mean, FOMO, FOMO is real, no matter how you look at it, when you look at it, people are like, they look at this, they're like, wait, 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 wait. You mean that we can, we can. <laughs> we can cut so, out so, those big name uh, ISP providers who's been, you know, yanking us around. <laughs> yeah, they've been, they, especially you, Ben, they've been uh, oh, treating you quite nice. I don't know uh, what but, I did to them, but. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's probably, they watch your videos, man. But uh, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, PKT has been something, uh, even even setting up the miner, everything is so easy to use. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not like, like the UI isn't like beautiful and, you know, all pretty and stuff, but it gets the job done. So so kind of like um, what, what Ben was going into a little bit uh, with the usability and making PT, PKT more pretty, making it more where it's like not not to say dumbed down, but where the normal average person can say, okay, I see Verizon, I see at and I see Cricket, I see whatever else, but this thing is competition as well. And it has a chance. That's mm -hmm. what that's what the potential that I'm looking for. We're looking yeah. at. And to expand on it, especially the security part, like I said, it's very important. It is a hard fork of Bitcoin technology. Mm -hmm. So a lot of hard forks of Bitcoin are still around. Litecoin, uh, uh, Bitcoin Cash, the uh, Bitcoin Gold. You know, some of those mm -hmm. projects don't get a, a whole lot of attention compared to the main daddy of Bitcoin, of course. But those blockchains still exist and proof of work. While there is some eco problems with some of the proof of work, a lot of that's getting worked on. What PKT has done has made it to where it is completely eco-friendly because it's not proof of work where you need all this equipment to mine PKT. You can mine PKT through the 
internet bandwidth because that's literally what you are mining is hard bandwidth which the idea would be eventually for the whole entire world to have one internet that cannot be turned off because it's secured by nodes that nobody has control of. And I think that's the biggest weakness in cryptos because if the internet goes off, which of course it's catastrophic, but let's be honest, at this point, <laughs> after the last couple of years, catastrophes have happened. That's a regular Thursday, right? So, <laughs> I mean, that is my biggest concern with cryptos in general is the ability that if the internet gets shuts off, what do you do? Cryptos no longer, I mean, they might exist, but they're no longer usable or anything else. And PKT has the potential to solve that problem and make an actual internet that cannot be turned off for Web 3.0 by anybody. And that would give concrete foundation, I think, to every um, crypto project that even even Bitcoin and Ethereum need that, right? Because if no internet, they wouldn't work. Yeah. So. Well, uh, if, if I get touch on it, like, like if the internet gets shut off, there, there there are two ways it happens, right? There's if it really goes down, we have much bigger problems, right? Because <laughs> the amount of robust systems in place to make sure that the data centers that whether that's Google or Amazon or you know Microsoft Azure, or all of these these um, I mean, there's just so much infrastructure there that you know. What is the event that causes the, the 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 infrastructure, the backbone of you know connectivity around the world to go down? I don't know what that is, but I'm not going to be too care concerned whether I can Google something or go on my Facebook page or crypto works. If the internet goes down, something happened that's really bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're in like food and water type like uh, scenario. I think a bigger question is like the censorship of the internet, right? Yeah, and you know that's something that you know, depending on where, where you are, right, is very real. And when you can start bifurcating the internet from the service provider and everything becomes, you know, encrypted and you can go peer to peer and you can almost have like smaller mesh networks that are then connected across mm -hmm. to, um, you know, in, 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 a, in a community, like you could have a lot of the internet, you know, um, through a network like PKT, let's say on, on like the East Coast being connected to the West Coast, obviously you'd be using the backbone of the current infrastructure, uh, but that's something where it gets interesting, right? Where you mm -hmm. can um, you can really evolve into a new, you know, a new internet, which is less, which is more censorship resistant, yes. right? which I think would be a great thing to see in, you know, the likes of, um, you know, a Russia or so, some other, some other countries. I don't know how that would, would happen, but, um, you know, there, there is the, you know, taking censorship uh, out of the internet, I think is a, is a positive thing.